must bans, right? You yep. gotta get rid of the glue. Get confirmed. Here. And here's what's interesting. It's Malvinas who banned it out. Mm -hmm. It was Dragon earlier yeah. on it, and he knows, like, all right, whoever's going into the XP lane, I don't want to give it, so let's not. Yeah, it's all about priorities, right? Blue side so far has been doing really well throughout the day. It, we're already in match four. Maybe yeah. blue side's still going to keep that 100% win rate. I, I think you have a huge advantage, obviously, if you do have that first pick, but mm -hmm. still, the same can be said. If you are going to be on red side, you get those two priority picks that you want to. You have to be willing to give up something, but in turn, you have that exchange, right? And then play around it. Now, this is where I, I love the surprises that we've seen so far. One of them being even a Khalid pop up, you know? And actually, when Alien played it, it worked so well for them. And I'm wondering if there's more room here. We talked about in the keys to victory, is there pocket strats yeah. in the band? Will that happen here? Uh, hopefully it does for either of these teams. Well, neither here nor there, game three, that Khalid was only really picked because you can't stop the quick sand guard. Exactly. So it was so sustainable even without that Estes heal. Now yeah. with the Faramis out of the question, we're open to more bursts, we're open to more DPS even. So you can expect that these team fights won't last too long. If somebody goes down, two or three maybe, then the opposing team pushes that advantage. Now we're waiting for one more ban. I'm guessing uh, you want to take out something from the XP lane. If you're Malvinas here, take out something, something side laney because the mid and the jungle are more of flexes these days. I'm looking at a Fredrin, yeah. somewhere in the first three picks from either team. Yeah, possibly. I definitely think that Malvina seems more likely to do so, but this is what I wanted to see. Get rid of the Joy. I feel like right now, nobody really knows what role Joy needs yeah. to fill, right? Yeah, we saw literally in match number three coming in, uh, coming in from Yellow Flash. XP lane. XP lane. XP lane. But even when I look at Naisu, I'm like, you cast the top I was going to say, what's weird is seeing Joy, even in a previous tournament, like, they put her in the jungle, they put her in mid, they nah. put her in the XP lane. Where does she where does she fit? And where does she actually excel? I think mm -hmm. throughout the tournament, it's going to be similar when we were at MSC, where, where does Julian work better? Oh, exactly. no. Here we go. The Kaja is a roamer, uh, I believe, uh, going to the hands of Yumski. And now, swing, swinging over, I'd say the Frederick's still good here. I think Frederick overall is going to be good, even if you do get hit uh, by the Kaja. All, at the very least, you have enough HP you to kind mind. of hold hunker down. You don't mind. Yeah, it, and I, I, I think at this stage of the game, Malvina's game and Malvina's game have a really good opportunity to punish. There's still a lot of priority picks. The far sub, for an example, a really good one to distance their opponents, but they even get the carry. And I've heard a lot of things about this attack speed carry shredding through the entirety of Mobile Legends. They got buffed. Carry yeah. got buffed recently, and I believe today alone, Carry has been going bonkers. I think that's what the kids say. That he, she's been bonkers. going bonkers. That's yeah. that's. I think that's around the the sayings here, right? <laughs> so we'll see if uh, pinwheels go bonkers in this game. But uh, still, you already have so much damage just in these two picks alone. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you can protect that damage, right? Uh, on the other side here, Todak gonna lock in one of my oh. favorites jungle picks here, gonna be the Hayabusa, but they also take in the Valentina. I thought for a moment there it was gonna be the Valentina, that was gonna be your favorite, but then I remembered Gord, and I was like yeah. very confused for a moment there, but don't <laughs> worry about it. The Hayabusa is gonna be quite an interesting, is gonna be an interesting position, right? Because yeah. again, it's quite dive heavy, and you need to take out this carry, or maybe even the far stuff. Yeah, that's a clear answer by Todak, is saying you pick the softies, all right, we're gonna go ahead and yeah. uh, get the natural predator here. And I like the Valentina, it really doesn't say anything, can still, uh, go into a side lane. Again, it's not that we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. So they can do that or keep it in mid. So there's so much still going on for Todak. And there's the Fredrin. Again, yeah. you want to have that frontliner. And even if you do get pulled in, and you even if you eat a face full of a shadow kill, you're fine. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the good things about Fredrin is even though Hayabusa is able to get one item, uh, one item and even out the scale against the Fredrin, naturally, until Hayabusa maybe gets three items, yeah. four items, it still has to stack up his passive against a Fredrin. He gets to walk away for free. Fredrin can do what he wants to do. Again, that's why I think we have, you know, first pick that Kaja allows mm -hmm. him to have that divine judgment you can hopefully get the right targets to pick off that you want to and then again you have valentina too right so if you want to go feathered airstrike to feathered airstrike have that burst potential on both sides find a lockdown and then by that time high boost is online ready to go that could work and so far that's the only win that todak has on the valentina yeah. so so far I, i'd say save for the flex again the fact that it's todak comes with the territory 
The Valentina isn't worth it yet, personally. That there's not much he's picking up here. I think it's also to change the mentality of how Mal uh, Malvinus Gaming is going to draft, right? Yes. They, they don't want to give high value ultimates over uh, to Todok from this stage onwards in the second part of the draft. I mean, look at the band so far. Malvinus Gaming is like no gold lane. Get, get rid of the, one of the strongest ones, all right? We've already got the carry. Naturally, Beatrix is going to go. But then we look at Todak and they're like, okay, they're going to be playing for the carry. They're going to be playing for their Farsa. Let's get rid of zone control. Let's get rid of ways for them to easily face check bushes. The only, the only different like order that I would like to see from Todak from this is if they say they left the Valentina, they didn't lock in the high boost yet because maybe Valentina, you know, goes into the jungle <laughs> and then you locked in your marksman, right? You have that because you can see all those those last two bands were focused on those marksman choices. That. You bring up a really good point here. There is a good chance that Hayabusa might get chucked down into the gold lane to try and trade against someone who's naturally short range like a what carry. If? Or an XP Valen lane. Yeah, or an XP lane. But, wait, I, I don't want to go. Okay, well, let's not get theoretical here. Let's see what this pick is. As this band, Cho gets locked in. Good peel coming in from Malvinus Gaming. Yeah, no, Rome Cho is all right. Uh, yeah. Again, uh, Todak tried to choke it out, right? No Grok, uh, no Estes. I think they were like, trying to narrow it down to either a Cho or an Atlas, and they would rather just deal with the Cho. Again, pick off for pick off, and that's all right. Now, Todak, here we're gonna finally see where that Hayabusa or that Valentina might finally go. Yep, they have to finish off their team composition here in the second phase. I'm excited to see what this is going to be, knowing how Todak likes to be. Why? Irithil. Irithil, save. Momo. I would argue that Claude might be the better, the better way to go. It's an argument. Oh, it's not. Oh. It's, <laughs> surprise. I feel this is so annoying. This is, Todok, they do it in the <laughs> local leagues and they do it here. They're like, this? Nah, 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 nah. Let's take it a step further. I'd say this is a double swerve. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're, they're showing us we can flex, but no, we're going to oh. actually keep it close to home here. And here's an old school pick. I haven't seen Uranus in a yeah. while. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is rather interesting. Okay, okay. So we know that Chiku is going, at the very least, Chiku is going into the gold lane. Momo is going to go be going into the EXP lane. No shenanigans here. I think it's, so uh, I'm actually really, I'm happy. I, I am happy that this is what's drafted here from Kodak. Uh -huh. I just want to see how it all plays out here. Because even so, again, Valentina, you have a couple options. Feathered Airstrike, now you have the Way of the Dragon. Still mm -hmm. could help you. Still a great pickoff tool to pair with a Divine Judgment. But it's just two. It's just, just two. two picks. It's just two. It's, and true. it's usually these two heroes, right? The Cho and the uh, Farsa. You never get to see them out. They're usually hiding in bushes, and it's usually too late. Oh. So Todak have to play. They have to play on instinct, and they have to time their team fights better than they usually do. I'm not ready for this. I can already hear the chants here, but it's about to be time. The Malaysian representatives up against the Peruvians. It's going to be Todak up against Malvinas Gaming. Quickly, write down your predictions. Cheer for your favorite team as we jump right into the land of dawn. Oh, man, I'm excited for this one. I like both team compositions, like I mentioned, but at the same time, when will Rival be able to get to that point where Hayabusa needs to be to get those Shadow kill Kills off and just work around that? Again, five-man rotation is going to be strong for them. Given the lineup that MVG is rocking here, I'd say if they don't give uh, the, the respect that Rival demands, mm -hmm. Harley and Joker are going to have a hard early uh, time in the uh, game here. Given oh. that Stefan needs to babysit them. Look at this. It's high and dry on Rival. So as long as there's only one of you around, Best believe that feels like it's more than just one core item you need to build. This is so interesting. This feels like, you know, seasons, long seasons past. Momo, he's just going to have to, you know, <sighs> sit on a stick all day while Chiku is having the time of his life as they have swapped lanes. It's a switcher. Oh, yes. Well, yep. what this allows for uh, Chiku to do is just dominate the Uranus. There's that range advantage. And then for Lapu Lapu, for Momo, is he doesn't even care. The carry doesn't deal much damage in the early game. You can dominate with your nukes, with your early game skills. Absolutely. I mean, look at this. Yeah. They already got it half, but MVG, they want to go for something here. Can they actually pull it off? I mean, Yusuke, he sees what's going on and giving that extra information to Chiku. I feel like Todok want to actually bring the fight to Balvinas. So I'm wondering how this is going to work, but here in the mid lane already, a shadow kill committed. No kill, though, for either team. Back to the my question here. Is this as actually valuable to give Momo that gold lane and allow Lapu Lapu to get those items faster and then you have Chico here it's in on the condition. XD lane? It's yeah, on no. condition, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's less about the items that they get and more of the interaction with the heroes. 
and how they scale up into the mid game. Oh, beautiful first blood here. And I mean, look at that. The entire gold trail has been ripped off by Chiku guys itself instantly. This is what I'm talking about. The tempo there, you're going to keep on pushing it and forcing these movements from Malvinas Gaming so they at least have some form of control. Yeah. I mean, first turtle of the game, they do have that advantage. Let's see if they can zone him out pretty well here. Steffi has to get out of there, too. It's just going to go over the hands of a rival. And this is the thing, right? Hayabusa with an early kill sets you up for that first easy turtle take. This is huge already for them. Mm -hmm. I feel like Malvinas Gaming was expecting Product to play slow, but with the lane swap and how fast they're shredding down these neutral objectives, yeah. as well as turrets, I think Malvinas Gaming really need to rethink their plan. It's a very fundamental approach to the game. It was less about building items and more of this hero's not going to do anything to wow. me. Mm -hmm. Let me just take advantage of this. And look at this, converting straight into a 245 push. Bottom lane, that's a no-go. That's a dead zone for MVG. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful map movements coming in from Todak. You can see the mid lane support run down to help Chiku guys. But at the same time, Hay uh, Hayabusa is not going to let free EXP and gold be a waste. Oh, Yoomsky. Oh, Yoomsky, you're going to go in with a oh. flicker. And everybody there to back him up. But they can't get the kill just yet. Harley able to get out of dodge. But it's Dragon that falls here in the mid lane. A little unlucky there with the Shadow Kill RNG. It ended up onto the Uranus, but looking at top side, Joel Cruel. Go through, gonna try to get out. There's the flicker in with the kick as well. Chiku guys gonna fall here. Joel Crew picking up a kill. Yep, fight started and it was Chiku guys was actually ahead, right? Mm -hmm. Both on EXP and on gold, but they had the man advantage, MVG. They were just much, much faster. And this is what I was talking about. If Stefan can hide in the right bushes, he can actually catch off guard TDK and maybe shrink this early gold lead. 1.5? In under four minutes, that's actually pretty big. Yeah, no, I think it's just the foreshadowing that Stefe foresaw. It's like, okay, you broke a tier one, where's the next move you're gonna make? You are gonna have to run through the river or walk through the lane to get to that top side of the map. Oh, fully stacked here. Steffi gonna Ooh. get taken out right away with a shadow kill to follow up. Forcing Harley out here with wings by wings, but another kill going to the hands of Todak. And now here's another concept that we have to understand. MVG, Steffi, he has so much to deal with, right? He has to protect both Harley and Joel Crew, and now Joel Crew's down. Yeah, there's nothing you can do to get out of that one. So, so now, cool. you have to consider, yes, he can find these ambushes, but where does that leave him? He might be trying to do too much. He's getting overloaded now. Yeah, I think right now, MVG, they're not entirely sure how they should take, what approach they should take with Todok, because even though Topside ticket is, is already broken, you can see the Hayabusa and Lapu Lapu taking the initiative to hover around the turtle in case Malvinas gaming doesn't touch it. Yep, so this is Todak's game so far. The, uh, the first five minutes, yeah. Almost 4K ahead. It's Todak who's making the decisions, and MVG just following to their pace. Okay, Leo, I think we need to talk about win conditions here, right? Because Malvina's gaming, it feels like towards the later half, is going to have a bit of an advantage. Yes, but only if they can stop the initial TDK ambush. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's TDK who's saying, we do this, what do you do next? They have to bait out those ults first. Mm. That's how it's gonna happen in the late game. All right, it's about team fighting with 4K with a 4K lead. Hopefully, Malvinas Gaming they don't lose their mid turn because with that, at least they have some form of safety moving around in their jungle. Well, I mean, not only that, but I feel like part of this was what we were talking about—the flexibility uh, card that Todak likes to play here, right? And even so, when they switch lanes, I feel like oh. that did something. Oh, Yomsky gonna go in one more time. Steffi though able to survive. Rival finding Harley though, gonna push them back into the jungle, and it's Joel Crew that falls. And now Dragon running as well. They might look for a crash oh. down here. Conceal play comes in. Steffi falls. That was beautiful. And. Honestly, I, oh, I I respect it. And now the next one is going to fall with a complete wipe here. Joel Cruel, Joel Crew, I'm I am surprised he was willing to flicker in for that. No, 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 Gideon, you're surprised that Todak is this clean and this quick and this fast. No, it's it's expected. Come on, I, 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 I don't want to be that guy. What do they but call you, it again? There's a certain term. <sighs> All right, let There's me stand up for this, <laughs> put in some air in my lungs. It's called Todak Lunga. Exactly. <laughs> See? So again, just in that one moment, right about five minutes in, 5.15, mm -hmm. you saw how Steffi was trying to bait out the Divine Judgment. And that's, a, again, a little bit of a trailer or a teaser as to how late game is going to happen. But you don't do that. Not like this. Not with 4K ahead. You're losing. You wait until that shrinks. I think now it's even more solidified that they have to wait. But with a 7K gold lead six yeah. minutes into the game, so far, this is the biggest lead we've seen. It's because of that blunder. It's because of that whole cha-cha that, okay, I think we can fight him. Just wait for the ult. Wait for the ult. No, 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 no. You're not in shape yet. So for now, for MVG to try to recover, 
What they can do is hold back, hold back, wait for Joker to get the items and protect Harley as much as possible. Hide in your oh. jungle! Hide in your jungle under your turrets! They're still gonna go for it. There is gonna be a trade here though across the board. Steffi for Yumski. So they're happy with finding a kill here, but still, is it gonna be enough? They're still crawling from being whiplashed by Todak. Mm, I don't think that was as worth it as I would like to believe for Todak, mainly because Yumski had to use his flicker, and that's a very powerful tool, especially for Kaja players, to close that distance. I mean, yes, you could you would imagine that the the initial gap closer would be good enough, but yeah. you need to combo it. So we'll see. I don't think uh, they're going to do anything crazy until we do see Rival have his ultimate, and at the very least, Yumski has his flicker. Yep, looking at the items here, at least there's a Clock of Destiny on Harley. So all the more they have to stick to the late game plan. Clock of Destiny recently got reworked, so you get a little more stacks, the little longer the game goes. As for... Um, Dragon. I think Dragon is going to be key here to expand, extending the game. He has to find another lane that he can force TDK to split up. Oh. That's what a Uranus does best, right? Like try to bait out opponents and I think slowly, maybe after one more tank item, yeah. the Malaysians will be slowed down in their siege. Oh. So that's one way to do it. Just push one up, but no! Oh, they're going to crash down here with the Divine Judgment. Prince Fran quite low with the way the Dragon's coming out on Chiku, guys. But meanwhile, mm. Moon able to get his own Harley oh. Falls. They're chasing back the Shadow Kill. Takes out Steffi, mm. and it's for that fall for MVG. Beautifully played by Momo, able to cancel that Feather and Airstrike, really putting the pressure on Malvinus right now. And Dragon unable to get into the fight in time to slow down the front line of Toda. Yeah, no, and I think he used the Flicker just to finish one hero off. The cancel was already done. He's like, I, I have my killer instinct, dude. I just need the Flicker in. And now they're going to convert straight up into a turret and yeah see look so dragon you can say dragon he's going up there he's building up to at least some level of peel this is crazy uh, an inhibitor turret in the base has gone down before that lord has even spawned right that's just how much pressure TDK is putting here, and now Lord is up. This is a 10k gold lead nine minutes in. Yeah, I, I think for Malvinus Gaming, this is a really huge mountain to climb, and especially in local MPLs, a 10k gold lead is pretty much death to a lot yeah. of teams this early on mm. pre-10 minutes. Rarely happens. Yeah, rarely happens as well. Well, I don't know. MPL MY is a little whack. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why. That's why it explains how Tondak is just through the roof now. Look, even Yumski wow. deals more damage than Harley. I'm surprised that Moon is top of the charts. He's well, kind of killing it. <laughs> it's the terrifying. AOE, the a it's terrifying. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> it, he, he's in everybody's faces, right? Uh, so is. given how far a Moon has taken this and how much gold Rival is farming, this is also surprising, right? Because mm -hmm. if I'm not oh. mistaken, he's also taken away even... MVG's jungle. Yeah, yeah, they're invading pretty often here. Are they gonna sacrifice the tier two? But oh. it's you. Divine Judgment gonna come out on Prince Fran and the Retribution, but still, they're gonna just push them off. They don't want to do the Lord. There's there's yeah. nothing left for Prince Fran. He's more like a popper. Mm. And speaking of popping, Dragon! The Peruvian Dragon! More like the Peruvian Lizard! Just got popped. So it's, it's tough. So again, I presented one alternative. Dragon should buy a part of the map, right? So yeah. that the rest of them can try to farm up, give items to Harley and Joe crew. Mm -hmm. But it's so hard when Todak knows that they're that much ahead that they can Divine Judgment Dragon and tell right. Yeah, and they also know that they don't need the Lord. The next yeah. inhibitor is about to fall. They are just naturally stronger. Oh, Steffi gonna get caught in a bad position here. Falls oh. into the jungle and now Joel crew I don't think he can get back to base in time here. He's going to get Just chased run. down. Momo coming in flashy no. style with the <laughs> flicker. Not even needed here, but Joel Crew still on the run. Yumsi going to dash in here. This is one way to do it. This is one way to do it. Say what you will. Joel Crew was going to die anyways, but he bought what? A solid 10, 15 seconds. Uh, 10, 15 seconds, but it's still it's still rough. I mean, they're not taking Lord. If Todak wants to end this game, they just take Lord. They just run it down, yeah. and they can pretty much force the fight guaranteed underneath the crystal of MVG. I'm looking at a threshold of maybe 15 minutes. But if, <laughs> if, if, if MVG can at least try to conserve themselves and stay alive up until 15 minutes, have at least maybe one more core item on Harley and Joe crew? Yeah. Maybe. But that's the thing, like, who is your saving grace here for MVG, right? Harley, Joel Crew. Joel Crew is so far away from that. Oh! Harley, though, able to survive just oh! there. Oh! Oh! Never oh! mind. Chiku, guys, from the backside. Oh! Now they're going to find Joel Crew as we were just talking about him. They fall here, and another one goes down. 
four fall again for MVG. And there's nothing Dragon can do here to defend. It's a maniac for Chiku, guys. GG, well played. Game goes to Todak here as they're able to score their very first point here in Group B. Wow, what a game. How many times in this game was Dragon dragged? It, it, it came to that point wherein the Uranus has mm -hmm. maybe two main jobs, right? Mm -hmm. Past the three minute mark, you're looking at, okay, it's a losing game. Yeah. Dragon, you have to be the main field. You, you, your, your lane is dead. 